Why, why do I keep freezing? It's every time you change things. I, I mean, I know, I, I kind of know why. It's just, I, I got to fix it. Is it your CPU, like, hitting no, 100%? No, no, no. I, no, 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 no. It's, it's going to be... Uh, <laughs> same joke again, Ali. Long, long time. <laughs> it's going to be... I have too many calls to the same um, video. Uh, <laughs> that's all it is. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, What's up, though? What's going on? Yeah, see, mm. now that I turned that off, that would probably fix it. So if I don't switch, we should be, if I switch again, we should, shouldn't freeze. This might freeze because this might call to it. Nope, freeze and then come back over here. No freeze. Yep, I fixed it already. All right. Hi, let's go. Uh, who's up next? Who wants to talk to the person that's currently taking the role while they're gone? Who oh, knows? Order? Who knows? I suppose Jake knows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I can go if you want. Hmm. It's a good it's thing you resolved that problem, by the way. Yeah. Had you not resolved the issue at Mara and um, uh, Saren, and Saren was the acting ruler while uh, you were gone, things could have gone poorly. You come yeah. back and be like, hey, everybody, how did things go while I was gone? And he's sitting there picking his teeth. <laughs> like, deliciously. Um. Anyways. So let's uh, let's go, boy. What's going on? Alrighty. Who do you want inside uh, the chamber? Who do you know. want to talk to? Um, I'll have the full council. Ooh, the full council. All right. Um. Whoa, whoa. Let's uh, let's get these boys in here. Um. Uh, who do you usually have? I think Urzog usually sits right here next to you. <clears throat> Mortifer. Duxul. Akram. Uh, Duxul's usually down here. Akram's usually over here. I think Mortifer's usually at the... at the. No, I think I usually usually leave the end one open. It's just you now have more seats. I actually don't even have room for uh, Mara. Yeah, or whatever her name is at the moment. I have to make room for her. But go ahead. Full council's there. Um, good. Uh, as we know, I will be leaving uh, to attend whatever this ball is called um, in the north. Uh, during my absence, uh, all matters are to be ran through our Oraculi. Our Oraculi is to rule as I would rule. He'll look at um, Saren. He says that. Mm hmm. So, um, you are new, but you are. Your order has guided me, uh, as they always have. I'm trusting in you that, mm, like I said, you will rule as I would rule. Um, <clears throat> chiming in. Iritha would say, Oh, Lord. Um, I understand that there are many cultural um, significant details that go along with being the Ashen Orc. Um, when the Ashen Orc rules a tribe, as an Ashen Orc has always ruled the tribe uh, in the absence or recovery of a national orc. It's the responsibility of the Oracle to lead that tribe until there's such a time that they return or recover. Um, I've been educated on this matter since I have um, come down this way. However, we are not in a tribe. Instead, we are in a clan, a Kajinxi clan. We are not in the Barren Lands at all. And Beyond that, the tribes usually are pittance. 20, 50. Let's be courageous here and say a thousand strong. But that's not how big um, Clandentio is, is it? More than five times greater than some of the greatest tribes to have ever existed in all of 
all of the Barrenlands. This is no small task for a small man who simply just wandered into our ranks. I mean no disrespect to the significance of an Oraculi, or the significance of that and the faith that you have to it, to yourself, but we are talking about the lives and leadership of over 5,000 people. He knows not the ways of Clan Densho, even if he knows the ways of the Ashen Orc. You remember, I imagine, how you scraped your knees and dragged your knuckles to learn how to lead? Do you really want those mistakes being made in your absence? That is why I've called you all here. Clan Dencho followed the old ways, and this is the oldest of ways. This is how it will be, Irithel. That is why Saren, and he'll look at him, will follow the advice of everyone that has been here. Longer, who knows Clan Densha. You are all to help him during the time that I am gone. There is to be no power struggles, no political maneuvers. He'd laugh at that. And then, um, because I will return. And everything will be as I left it. <clears throat> Who do you think is among your oldest followers here? Um, Not Urzog. We Mortifer. saw him up here. Uh, Mortifer. Mortifer's, Mortifer's been hanging out for a long time. Uh, Mortifer would not... Give, have an issue yeah. with it. Mortifer will crush little man if little man step out of line. You know, like, yeah. Mortifer takes no orders from anyone. I am Mortifer. A god amongst men. A god amongst gods. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, that's... I mean, they've all been with me for a fair while. Most mm. probably uh, shortly before or after um, I took over leadership of Den Show. Uh, although uh, Lyra, has I was just saying maybe for a very. I was just saying maybe time. Lyra came from, came from the Barrenlands with you. Yeah, uh, he also knew Roderick since he was a child, but Roderick's the viceroy over it. The other place anyway so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter um mara uh this has been his oracle for probably a while um so uh, so i would actually under lira beforehand i have lira chime in lira would say yeah. oh lord i um i know you've already set down the law so i understand this is final but it is my responsibility to see to it the safety and well-being of all that you deem to stay safe and well. So I will make one comment. When you were learning to rule, you had a short temper. You came from the old ways, as I came from the old ways. What happened to the last... Uh, what do you call them? Fuck. I forget names you like to put on these people. Up to the last, uh, shadow that existed here before Erethel. I believe he was eaten. And how about the last marshal before Doc Sewell proved their worth? I believe bludgeoned to death in the streets. It's a hard trip learning to rule. You say there will be no power struggles. You say there will be no political intrigue. Does this mean that you say that the le leadership of Clan Densho is changed if temporarily? That the absolute rule of our clan is not given to uh, Saren, who can choose for someone who steps out of line to be consumed or bludgeoned. And instead, they share power with all leadership. 
Siren is to rule as I would rule. And you are there to guide him like you have guided me. Siren, look around. Everyone here, I take their advice a lot of the time. Although the ultimate decision is mine, as it will be yours while I'm gone, you are to rule as me. Get to know these people because they will be what helps you succeed. He comes back, Sauron's picking his teeth. Delicious. Yeah. Like, what the hell happened? Ah, uh, Mara got out of line. Urzog looked at me funny. I don't think Lyra bathes enough. He doesn't take him on. He just gives the command for other people to take care of it. Mm. <laughs> well, then I'll just have to eat eat him, unfortunately. And then all my council's gone. <laughs> then he eats himself. Ooh, you flexible. Uh... <clears throat> all right. And so there's a, an understanding there. Nick! Who's going to be taking over in your absence and how are you going to talk to them? Be wary of who you choose because you don't want a vacancy in certain positions. Oh, that sucks because I, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be Tonscreet, so I'll just have to deal with it. Uh, luckily, Tonscreet missing is only a, a penalty to uh, economy, I think. All right. Good, good, good. I think, right? Uh, yes. So I will have a conversation with Tonscreed, but I feel like I would have to have a conversation with Shala directly after, separately. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> All right, so RP with Tonscreed first. Let's do this. So um, so uh, you call Tonscreed, and Tonscreed will come walking into the chamber wherever you are and simply says, um, Warlord? Tonscreet, uh, as you know, uh, I will be journeying north to uh, to dance for the northern clans, as you would. Uh, in my absence, I am entrusting Clan Kuchibashi to you. Excuse I expect me, you to... Warlord. Are you asking me to act as the interim warlord? I'm telling you to act as the interim warlord. That is going to be your responsibility. I would trust no one else with this task. I appreciate the, um, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, uh, what the hell's I'm looking for? I, I appreciate the honor to my dedication and the uh, opportunity to show my worth um, uh, once again to the uh, people of Clan Kushibashi. Uh, and those are, are not just... Uh, now, now I'm going to lose my words here. Uh, placating words or fancy words. You know, as we, as we believe here. Uh, I expect you to comport yourself the way you always do. And to handle all problems, internal and external, swiftly. Understand. Well, of course, um, I'll serve the people well. I'll see to it that we are able to um, continue plans moving forward as we had intended beforehand. Um, construction and the like that we have already discussed will uh, be maintained. More importantly, our defenses is what I'm going to be focusing on. The West. We need to focus our defenses on the West. Agreed. Uh, winter is coming, as they say. Because I'm hoping with the um, vassalage of the clan uh, Vosk to our east and our allies to the south, we are relatively protected. We'll keep eyes to the north. But I think that they'll also have their own problems coming from the West, at least as of now. So there shouldn't Agreed. be too much of a concern there. I'm, I'm hoping the tensions with the clans to the North will follow me. Um, and we can deal with them in a separate arena. 
Yeah. Well, Lord, if I, if I may, I had a bit of a gift, a parting gift for you. For while you are uh, heading north, I have been working very closely. As you know, um, much of our uh, higher stock has actually been sired by Nabu uh, himself. Nabu has served well, both as your mount and as um, uh, the sire to many of our best uh, combatory that have been uh, birthed. Um, the uh, Probably the greatest child that he had birthed, I worked very closely with, uh, trains them personally, um, brought them to a much higher degree of skill and dedication than any other combatory I've trained so far. I think they are finally ready. Ready for you. Um, Warlord. So, as you ride to the north, it would do me a great honor, as you have honored me, if you'd be willing to ride on this, uh, new steed that I have prepared for you. I look forward to seeing what you've done with the children of Nabu. <clears throat> he nods and says, It is a, a brilliant, a magnificent animal. I honestly had originally... Uh, tried to rear this one uh, to be a gift, perhaps for uh, Warlord Tessel, or one of the other allies that you would potentially work with in the future, but I without trying to sound too um, uh, without trying to sound too narcissistic, I think I outdid myself he or she is very good I, I I look forward to the journey. Then. Um. So um. And he'll actually lead you to go in and meets the uh uh the, the chocobo. Um. After which, of course, you're going to need to talk to um uh Shala. We'll get to that detail in a second. But back to uh, what you're going to do after you're done speaking with them, and it's kind of going over some uh important matters and blah blah blah. Uh. Ooh. After you meet with him and meet the chocobo and whatnot, which we'll talk to in a second. Um, why don't you go and uh, have your conversation with Shala probably that evening? Excellent. Okay, so Shala, as you may have heard, <laughs> I'm traveling up north. Um, I am placing uh, Tan Screech as as the head of Kuchibashi in my absence. She nods. Tan Screech is the shining pearl of Clan Kuchibashi. Um, he is uh, a noble, straight aligned blade. Therefore, I need to make sure that he stays that way, and that will be your task. Um, she nods and says. It's been so many years. I honestly don't know who joins your uh, ragtag group first. I'm pretty sure it was, yeah. It was both at the same time. Wasn't it? That first battle. Uh, if he says otherwise, I'll just kick his ass. That's why he's playing the face and you're wielding the blade. Is he aware? Of course not. Ah. So I shouldn't watch him directly then. No. Um, uh, she nods and says, any chief concerns? Triflings from the clan to the north. Uh, Densho gets raiding our lands again. Uh, trouble from the west. Upstarts from Hoko's new residence. So, the usual. She nods and says, Knowing Ton Scree, he's probably already intending to focus his eyes uh, solely on the West. Uh, he certainly loves to stare at them trees. I'll keep an eye on the North, and I'll keep an eye on Ton Scree's back. Ton Scree's back is most important, but yes. <clears throat> I know you'll serve me well. Um, she nods and says, find the right spot. And then we'll bow. And as she, she says that as she bows and turns to walk out. Um, 
Now we go to that part of the video game where you get uh, your first uh, steed. We actually have to choose all the details like, oh, what mane do you want? Oh, what coloration do you want? Well, how big are their feet? Is the beak this long or that long? How's it shaped? You know what I mean? Um, oh, so you, you've got like three days for me to <laughs> play in the character creator. Um, I love character creators. Uh, character creation is like my favorite part of the thing. And then when I, I don't know if you do this, but if I start a game and like, let's say I'm playing Mass Effect 1 again, like I am right now. I'm like maybe an hour into the game and I realize, fuck, I can't stand the way that face looks. I need to go back and change it. And then like restart the game just to change the character creation. It's yeah. so bad. Oh, and then I'm going to wind up with a pre-gen with like slightly different skin tone and hair color. Like that's it. That, that's how it always ends. But yeah. Um. All right. So uh, the, the link is actually right there for you on, um, on yeah. uh, what you call it? I'm looking at it now. Okay, uh, give me one second. I'm going to pop it up for everybody else to see as well so we can kind of go over these details. Uh, let me toss this right here. But then we also want to toss a Pathfinder. What are they called? Axe Beak? Uh, yes. Um, so let's grab this as well. So uh, let's grab together um, uh, a character sheet for you too. Um, we're going to close Tonscrete. We're going to open up a little character sheet over here. Oh, shit. I pressed Barbados by accident. Uh, character. Uh, we're going to call it, um, Axe 2, and then, oh, Jesus Christ, I forgot about that. It's so fucking annoying. All the ads over there on fucking, oh, so oh, annoying. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, this is going to be, uh, uh, Varix and, uh, Dale Review. No, 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 not Varix. Sorry, what's your name? Uh, uh Neldorath and Dale Review. Over here, Neldorath and Dale Review. Cool. All right, there we go. So um back over here uh for chat to see so what we're doing everybody um really quickly is uh nick actually gets a new um uh mage bread animal uh in accordance to like the mage bread kind of coming out of it where, where they have inside eberron um because it's something i absolutely love i like the idea of it so um nick we're gonna go ahead and um uh, go over the basic details of what that is and then you can of course build this up um, so first thing you want to look at is the core animal, which the core animal in this case is going to be an axe beak. Um, so, uh, with that being an axe beak there, uh, axe beak are large sized animals with stats of an 18 strength, 17 dex, 16 con, two intelligence, 11 wisdom, 10 charisma, right? As a basic axe beak, they have a cool ability called sudden charge and they have all the other details written here. Um, uh, because they are large, tall, they actually do have a reach of 10 feet with their beaks should they, uh, they themselves attack. Blah, 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 blah. So there's the, the fun basic details of Axe Beak. They're actually CR2 creatures. They're not wimpy creatures. Then you come over here to um, Mage Bread Animal. That actually increases the CR to uh, by one to a three right off the bat. It's one of the things that Ton Screech able to do for you. Um, AC, the Mage Bread Animal um, has a perfect form pelt, hide, shell, or other uh, epidermis. Improving the existing blah, blah, blah. So it's a plus two to their current uh, natural armor. Going back to Axe Beak, that brings a natural AC up to a, a 16. Um, HD is the same, defensive the same, speed the same, attacks the same, damage the same, space reach the same, attacks the same, cool. Abilities, as the base creature, except that one physical attribute, strength, dex, or con, has a plus four, and the other two have a plus two. So you want it to be either, uh, more dexterous, stronger, or, uh, or, 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 uh, tougher, right? So knowing Nick, uh, he's probably going to want that extra, sh uh, well, actually, I suppose the extra strength will help you with carrying shit, and the extra toughness is going to be with health points. So the difference of health points, because it's uh, uh, it's uh, HD is three. You're, either way, you're going to get plus three or plus six health points. I imagine strength is probably better for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm most likely going to get the boost of strength because we've been touting that line with the uh, carrying capacity and weight. Um, yeah. So uh, and you might get the additional weight to actually handle some barding too, which would be cool if you can get that on them. So yeah. So plus four strength and plus uh, two. But one of the things that you can do, Nick, is instead of like full on making a whole new character sheet like I just made for you, you can actually click, click the edit page of uh, Nabu and actually press uh, duplicate and then modify Nabu. Yeah. That actually might be easier for you. That actually might be much easier for you. So let me delete this um, modified one. If you can't do it, I can duplicate for you if you need. Yeah, I, I didn't see the duplicate option. So All right, so let me do that. So I'm going to edit. I'm going to duplicate. Um, let's make it a little bit easier for you. Give me one second, chat. Did it make it yet? It did. So cancel, yeah. close. 
So, um, so for now we can call him. Do you have control over it? You do. We're gonna, for now we're gonna call him Natu. Sounds good to me. Um, with the uh, edit at the beginning of it, so you can see it. All right, cool. So, um, uh, modifying Natu right now, like immediately on that character sheet you have for him, uh, you're gonna yeah. want to just right off the bat increase his uh, AC. Um, under was it under additional? Is that reprints natural? No. You have over here AC. Do you even have natural written in here for him? I don't know. You have temp set as four. Is that where you plugged in as natural? I think that is. It's either the natural or I do have magical barding. Um, so. You do. The AC gives a plus uh, a plus three, though, and it's already listed on there. Yeah, so then that, that would be uh, his um, natural armor. Then. So... I'm looking for a second because his natural is only supposed to be a two and you have a temp modifier of four yeah but that's because he's also an animal companion so if that's oh fine. that could be a factor as well gotcha so the best way to handle natural just so you know nick is over here on the um uh, let me actually show this to to chat so they can see kind of what i'm doing at the same time um oh, no oh, this one over here it was not to edit not to close you over here so they, they can see what i'm doing is um over on this page here um you just press natural armor and then you um uh equipped uh sure that's fine uh type is miscellaneous and you put the natural armor which was a two so now it's a four you want to put on there so you go back to the main page you can see it's a 23 that temp of four uh you might want to check and see exactly where that comes from but you they normally have a uh ac of 14 getting three from dex uh, uh, two from natural and negative one for size equal to 14. So this would normally make it a 16, right? And then your armor that you give them is giving them a plus, uh, plus three. So, um, is size, yep, size is factored. You have that all in there. Cool. So the, um, instead of a 16, that should bring it to a, a, a 19. And then you have this temp four, which you just have to figure out why that's there. Um, which we'll figure out. In a yeah. Th that was all of the, uh, the natural armor. Um, so the strength goes from being an 18 to actually being a 22. The dex goes to a 19 and the con goes to an 18. Yeah, at, at level four, he gets plus two natural armor for just for being an animal. Ah, okay, cool. So um, that would actually increase his natural armor. So is that is that where the temp four came from or? Yeah, yeah. So if we remove that temp four down to zero, just for simplicity, then as an animal companion, natural armor got plus what, two? Plus two, yeah. So that means it went from a two to a four, and then now with this, a six. Oh, no. Sorry. Uh, it's His natural armor is plus four for animal companions, so it's going to be a plus eight total. Wow, beautiful. And that's where your thing came from. Perfect. Beautiful. Um, did he ever get a stat increase from being a natural animal companion? Yes. And that's why his strength is a 20 currently, correct? Correct. Strength and dex both got a plus two. Which is why his strength is a 20 and his dex is... Uh, his, uh, dex is uh, currently a 17 out of 17, so I actually never got the plus. So let's oh. look at that uh, ruling really quickly, just to make sure things are correct. Pathfinder, uh, animal companions. Strength and dex score is what it says. Uh, yeah, and its base is supposed to be, what did I say, a seven? It's supposed to be a base of 18. So you just never increase his dexterity as you were supposed to. Where does it? Yep, strength dex, yep. Real. Not only is it, and what, what's the what's your effective score uh, level for the sake of animal companions? Uh, it's seven. So it's your full level. Yeah. So it's it, it's currently six becoming seven, right? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, six becoming. No, seven. No, yeah, yeah, you're fine. So it is a plus two, as you said. So that, that means your strength should be that, but your dex also should actually be nineteen. Oops, shit! I just pressed forty-one. Uh, nineteen. Cool. Um, bonus tricks we'll get to in a minute. Natural armor, as you already discussed. Uh, feats we're not worried about. Da, 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 da. What was the other thing? I was oh, and then also they got the ASI for level four. You got one ability score increase. Did you actually adjust any of the ability scores? Let's see. Charisma stayed the same. Wisdom stayed the same. Intelligence stayed. Oh, you increased the intelligence to a three. Yes. Yeah. So that means your axe speak is actually. Is it too intelligent to be an animal companion now? No, I don't think so i think three was required for it to be able to do something and i i can't remember what it was um an animal companion with intelligence three or higher can purchase uh, uh ranks in any skill 
Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay, so that's where you put it. Perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Um, okay. After that is going to be now we apply the stats for it being a um what should we call it? Uh a mage bread. So, because this is gonna be replacing your animal companion, right? So yeah. are you still gonna put the plus four to your strength to make it a twenty-four? Yes. Okay. So twenty-four strength, that means your dexterity a twenty-one. And your con and uh eighteen. Which, um, uh, technically speaking, you have to roll health points again for your uh, character, but assuming you didn't roll health points with a uh, HD of... How many HD does it have? Um, seven. Seven. That's how that works. Really. At level uh, six and seven, it's HD is six. So six. so that's six plus one is 56 health points is technically where it would go to if it was Nabu specifically getting this. But you technically have to re-roll health points. We'll get to that in a minute. Um... Uh, let's see with this, uh, continuing with the other boons that you get. So it's AC, just so you know, just went up to a 25. That's balling. Yeah, that's insane. That's a, that, that, that's a quick bird. Uh, it's a borderline, borderline, a terror beak, um, a terror bird. Sorry. All right. I've got feats. A mage bred animal gains one of the following bon uh, feats as a bonus feat. Alertness, athletics, uh, endurance, improved natural attack, multi-attack or run. For you, if I might suggest, probably run because they don't intrinsically have. Oh no, they do intrinsically have run. Yeah. So he already has run as a feat. Endurance would be pretty good. You you have on there. Oh, those are the extra feats you got for um, being higher. higher level, however. Yeah, for be, it being higher level. So it's grabbing. Theater. What? Theoretically, if you got endurance, right, you could it could sleep in like medium barding, medium light barding instead of not being able to. Yeah, you can put barding on it and it can handle the barding and stay in it. Endurance might be a pretty baller one. It'll also, um, it, it, it resists exhaustion better. I actually don't. It maybe I so so that would be semi helpful. But remember, the one magic item I picked at the beginning was a magic saddle that turns into barding. So that's not entirely an issue. Oh, good point. That's not an issue at all. That's right. 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 Hmm. Okay. Technically, I only have a beak attack, um, Steve. So I multi attack doesn't really work. Uh, terror birds get uh, the, the ability to multi attack. Um, so improved natural attack might be the way to go. That increases the base uh, damage yeah. of the natural attack. So it's currently a D8. I think that makes it a D10, I think is what, what it goes to. Let me just confirm that. So that's going it to be a size increase. Um, kind, it's a die increase. It's um, a step up. Yeah, step up on the die increase. I, I can't. I honestly can't remember exactly what it does. So let's um, see. D eight becomes two d six actually. Yeah. Oh, but, that's that's nice. Yeah. So your your base damage from D eight becomes two d six for your bite. That's pretty that's intense. Like really good. Yeah, that's a good bump. I think we're gonna take that. So improved natural attack is a bonus fee that you're gonna grab for this bird. It's cool too, because in theory now you can actually make a bird that Jake can ride, but Jake doesn't want to ride your birds. You know, he's like, those are for the birds. I, I, I his plan is pretty sick though. Skills same as base creature, uh, special qualities. All right, you gain all of those other things that we discussed, as well as. Um, Oh, okay. So you gain excellent learner. Mage bird animals all have handle animal DCs reduced by two and can learn a maximum of eight tricks. Uh, training mage bird animal for the purpose takes one week less than normal to a minimum of one week. So, so handle animal is a little bit lower and you have maximum of eight tricks, but it's maximum of eight tricks instead of the typical maximum of three or six with it being an animal companion that that works a little bit differently. Instead of having six for intelligence, it has eight for its intelligence, plus you have um, uh, what should we call it? So, oh. um, because the way tricks usually works is this is a bonus number on top of it. But um, I'm just confirming tricks for a second. Um, push an animal, train a trick. Um, so with intelligence score um, of one, get maximum of three tricks. Intelligence score of two, maximum of six tricks. Technically speaking, above an intelligence score of two, it's just an intelligent animal. It technically has sapience, even if it's lesser sapience. So tricks don't matter as much. But um, 
uh, you would still put them on there because it's something that you would be able to do kind of like instantly without having to really contemplate it. What's up? Were you going to say something, Nick? Yeah, I think I, I needed to bump it to three so we could get combat reflexes. I think it was one of the feats required a minimum of three um, intelligence, and I, I think that's where that came from. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Also, it allows you to just spend skill points or whatever, as we discussed beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, so you're grabbing an improved natural attack and increasing your damage to, to uh, 2D6, um, right? Yeah. All right. You get an excellent learner. Nice. But then likewise, the major animal gains one of the following qualities. Once you choose it, it can never change. Swift breed. Its base speed increases by 10 feet. Thick skinned. Its natural armor increases by an additional plus two. Jesus. And uh, tracking expert, plus four on survival checks to follow tracks. So, um, I, I know what my opinion on this matter is. Oof. I mean, the, the speed is nice, but I mean, just turning Nabu into, or Nabu 2 into a straight up tank. Uh, at that, that's a tough call. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> what's the current is? movement speed? Uh, 50. 60 is really good. So, Nick, yeah. at level 9, when you become level 9, uh, not only does its uh, natural armor increase by 2 more, and its yeah. dex increases by 1 more, therefore increasing your armor by an additional 1, uh, you also get an ASI at that point, which you could... Well, I suppose it wouldn't necessarily help in that matter, but... Um, so, at level... When you turn level 9, its AC actually already increases by 3 more. So... Oh, so, wow. sure. Okay. <laughs> Might as well do that so you can get to around 30 at level 9. <laughs> oh, boy. Next thing you know, we're going into caves, boys, because I won't be able to take that. No Viking. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll probably take uh, Swift Bread. Swift Bread, so you're going to increase its speed by um, uh, 10 feet, and you can apply those notes onto your uh, character as needed. And that would be the end of it. So excellent learner and Swift Bread you're going to put on there. So its base speed is 60, like a light war horse. That means this thing with run, mind you, with run, if it's at a light load, it can't be above a light load, it can now run at five times its speed. Five times six is 300 feet around, right? So 300 feet around is really fast. It's really fast. You know what I mean? That's 3,000 feet in one minute. That's half a mile in one minute. Okay? You're talking less than two minutes. This thing clears a mile. Assuming its constitution is high enough. Oh, wait. You can run a number of rounds equal to your constitution score before needing to make checks. It has a constitution score of 18. Oh, look at that. You know what I mean? Like, it can run uh, effectively an entire mile nonstop. And just uh, just under a minute. Uh, sorry, just under two minutes. That's, That's without nice. even any magical enhancement on it. What's up? Uh, the real question is going to be who wants to name Nabu Nabu two? Yeah, Nabu two. Um, I mean, uh, technically speaking, though they are not awake right now, Green is the one that ha uh, whose character has the ability to do this. So obviously, I, I decide the abilities. But you can definitely pass that responsibility off to somebody in chat if you would like, like say a Viking or a, an Ashen or a Xylos. We'll let Green take it since he's not here to defend. So. Green is the one that names Kamatori. Yeah, so we'll let Green take it. Wow. It's definitely not LD. LD actually loses uh, dice rolling powers for, for a while for that one. What? No. <laughs> I need him to fail in them for me. Um, Yep, and Vikings out too. Yep, okay. Uh, ah, boot too. That's, that's, real, that's good though. That's clever. Uh, all right so anyways uh cool are we good with uh all of that um you're able to finish and then we just got to choose which colored token it is because um uh, we can actually bring this for chat to see and for nick to see as well uh oh, actually i have to do it as a dm don't i i do so nabu as it currently stands is actually this coloration of bird but there's lots of different colors to choose from really quickly for nabutu um where is birds? Is it monsters? No, not this one. I'm just going to call him Nabuto. Just to, I want him to follow Cell around when he runs through the woods again. <laughs> My arms are back. Naruto running through the forest of Eldemar. Setting fire to the plants. That's right. Setting fire to everything. That's good. 
It's not your fault. It's because you got the spirit of the fox, son. I, I, I got you. Spirit of the phoenix, okay. Sure, sure. Sorry, don't mind me. I'm trying to find the damn creature. Oh, I found... Oh, cool. I found a donkey. I even have a riding mastiff. Wow, I didn't realize there are these really cool-looking people in here. I'm glad I bought all these packs. Huh. Should probably pay attention to what I buy. But I, I, I'll get it because, like, one PC wants this one thing. Oh, there we go. All right, cool. I got some options for you, Nick. Uh-oh. He's going to have to make them big. All right. Uh, there's one. Since um, it's Nabu's child, it might it should probably have some color resemblance, no? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. it's a very diverse gene pool. Okay, I you know I'm just giving suggestions. Okay. This is like again the character building part of the game. <laughs> Take a bird, any bird. A bird for you. A bird oh for God. you. How many of them are you? there? Um. Uh, I'm past halfway. Ooh, that one's nice. Yeah, I like this one. But I love the a bunch of birds shitting in Derek's, uh, Eric's hall. <laughs> what else would they shit? I mean, it's not going to smell any different. Let's, let's be real. Uh, then that's the same one that you Ooh. already have. And then I think no. there's two Ooh, that more. That one's really nice. Red uh, sorry, th th three, I, I won't lie. I really liked the red one. Um, that's a good one. So it's the red and gold one, I should say. And there's two more. Um, here's a straight gold. And here's the last one. Which Ooh, very well maybe this one very well maybe winner, winner, chicken dinner. I I already did two of them. Oops, sorry, I made it too big. That was yeah, not so yeah, that's that is nice too. Yeah. All right. So Nick, right off the bat, uh eliminate five for me. Um brown, blue, uh pure red. Uh, and that's the the gray and uh the two orange. grays yeah the two grays can go so bottom right you're saying yeah bottom right and okay. the middle left oh the gray the, oh i see we mean gray and orange cool let me just uh remove these guys around for you i guess it's a little bit easier to see them uh move you over here move you here cool all right give give a moment to look at it and then decide, um, I think, two more to get rid of. Then we have to really knuckle down. Yeah, why don't we get rid of uh, Toucan Sam? Toucan Sam, which one's that? That's the... Oh, the, oh, the green one. and gold. Green and gold, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. All right, yep, yeah, one more. Um, and uh, the dirty brown one. The one immediately to the right of Nabu? Yes. Okay. It's got like bronze color or whatever. Yeah, I, I look like dirt. Um, yeah, you can get rid of green too. Yeah, those those monocolored ones can be kind of rough for uh, yeah. for ones like supposed to be the iconic bird. All right, I won't lie. I like all of these for different reasons, and I, I I'm personally having a hard time choosing. Like to me, like the, the pure gold one is the mono one, but it also looks so sexy, right? The red one, I honestly feel like if you save the red one and eventually you breed one specifically for Tessel, that's that red color. And yeah, that, that'd be really cool. That is a Tessel looking bird. Yeah, like I feel, I feel like that one you should eliminate only so you can save it for Tessel in the future. I will one day ride an elk instead. Don't worry about it. Was there a green with gold trim? There was. I'll, I'll pull it back out just so you can see it. But uh, he already he already eliminated it. Actually, yeah, but that, those are my colors. I mean, so. Oh, true. Green, green and black. But uh, let me get the green with gold. Um, I don't think there was yeah. a green and black, unfortunately. But I'll get the green and gold back out. Oh yeah, no, that looks terrible to me. I... Yeah, I that one does look pretty bad for the mixed. I mean, as an example for Nick's uh, colors. You know, obviously, this is the color of his flag, everybody. So it's actually black and green with like a silver. So, um, anyways, so go ahead. Um, why don't we go with? Oh, you hold on. They say it would be better if it was darker. Let me try something real quick. Let me just fit with that green and gold one, and let me, let's add like a black layer to it, like that. Or is that not any better for you? No. Okay, cool. We'll just delete it. Gotcha. All right, next the up. Blue one's nice. 
Yeah, so so the next challenge is, is technically, you know, if, if I'm to, yeah, if I'm thinking about how Naren looks, you know, is my armor in my clan colors or is it just like monotone armor? That's that's the real question. But if I'm going to be marching uh, marching all up there in ceremonial digs, um, I might as well go with gold. I'll go with the solid gold for now. You're solid gold, really? All right. All right, cool. Maybe oh, now, now, now I'm second guessing. The other reason, the other reason why I say because Nick, this is like the big upgrade for your bird. So the one, unless it dies in combat, which you're more or less set, setting it up that fuck you, Scott, my thing will never die. Uh, unless it dies in combat, you've got this bird until it dies of old age. You know, the yeah. black and gold is really good because of the contrast, which is helpful. Um. I mean, he just, were you not here for the past couple of minutes? The, the green ones did not look good. It, it, they did not. If there was like a green and silver, I probably would have went for it. But um, yeah, actually, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do the uh, the golden black. I think that that works. Golden black? Yeah. So you want to go with that one there? So we're eliminating yeah. full gold? This one we're saying we should save save for sell in the future. Like that's a sell bird. Uh this I mean, one honestly this looks like a den show bird to me, but he's not gonna ride a bird. He 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 doesn't want a bird. So um, his colors are blue. Yeah, but that, I uh, I have to ride one in there though. It will, it's gonna be struggling. It's the legs gonna be breaking beneath you. Well I have to, that's the way it was set up. It's the legs gonna be we breaking beneath you. We have to have uh it was your bloody plan. You're like, okay, so all three of you have to ride Kumatori. No, no, no. All it's a, it's okay. Shado, it's okay. Uh, calm down. Calm down. Dance. We can make all it so that dance. you Don't have a, a bird that can handle you, but it's just going to lose in other areas. It's going to be like a big, dumb bird with like like worse dexterity. <laughs> it's like, I can handle them. It's like one in yeah, bird with fits, like 25 strength. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be this big, hulking bird. It's probably got IBS. You know, because it has to eat so much to, to carry your ass. So you two are just be going to be the big smelly birds. Like I, that's I like that. It's it yeah, fits. Okay, so this is going to be your new uh, uh, Natu, whatever its name is. Yes, and also one of his tricks is going to be dancing. Where is it? It's dancing. Oh my god, that's hilarious. You're going to teach it the Varric style. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he's gonna he's gonna do the wampum barracks style. That's actually fantastic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's so good, Nick. God, I mean, I... It's, that's a thing now. That's gonna be my show. Um, my my so, contribution. Like instead of you dancing, you have your bird dance. That, for that, you? That's right. That's damn right. That's... So Tesla's gonna be the only one out there dancing. <laughs> I, it makes sense, but you know your half cape is gonna flutter so <laughs> nicely. <laughs> oh God! I'll give you some nice, colorful uh, commentary feathers you can put in your hair. It'll be good. Yo, yeah. Tesla changes his cloak color ball. from black to red. It'll be the bell of the ball, Tesla. Tesla has a feathered cloak on. <laughs> makes sense. There you go. All right, your commentary is all set now. Uh, the one last thing is you have to roll for its health points technically. Because all NPCs have to have their health points rolled for from scratch. So if it if it is uh, uh, how many D, D is it for you right now? Sixty. Six. Uh, Sixty. Yeah, so, well, we know that at the end of the session, you guys are going to be leveling anyways. So we could assume that you're level seven. So that being said, when you're level, oh, it's still sixty. Uh, um, should, should we roll health points at the end of the session? Rather than the start no, beginning the start of the next one. Yeah, start of the next one. It's more All fun right. that way. So it's six D eight, Nick, and then because it's six and it's uh, HD is what plus four now. Yeah. So it's six D eight plus uh, six times four is twenty four. So slash R six. Good. D eight plus twenty four. Ooh, those are some. There's some biggins in there. Well, that's actually yeah, one that's health nice. point less than what it would have been if it was Nabu. So that's that's not bad at all. That's that's solid. It's it's above average. Yeah, because I, I currently had it set for 56. So now we're just changing that to a 55. 
and we're we're good to go. Like that's solid. That's a solid number right there. Cool. Uh, it's also I won't lie. I, I prefer fifty five over fifty six. We all know why. We all know why. It just feels better, you know. Yeah, I like the divisor on it more. You know. You know, it's just one of those like. But either way, badass. That's cool. It's a cool nice. bird. Yeah. So you have a new bird that you're gonna bring with uh, bring with you. Uh, sorry, that you're gonna be able to ride up there. Um, I I'm curious what its current uh, what its carrying capacity is now. It should actually be listed onto its character sheet, being large sized and bipedal. Uh, it should be listed under the additional area. Yeah, uh, light yeah. mode is four sixty six. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 insanity. That's nice. Yeah, because its strength that's is what twenty four. So yeah, if you change the medium, let's see if it adjusts that. That's more than I can like carry. In totality. Um, because AC is right now. What, what is AC right now? 24? Twenty four. So it still says light load four sixty six. Multiplier times one. All that stuff. So let me change si size back up to large and see if it affects it correctly. Because the even though the size, that's weird. Your AC stayed twenty five either way. Why is it doing that? Your AC should be 10, plus 8 is 18, plus 3 is 21, minus 1 is 20, plus 5 is 25. But the, I, don't, I don't think the size categories actually change anything. They actually they actually do, they, uh, but infrequently. It's really weird. So let's do like a, a 10 temp over here. And usually once you alter something else on the sheet, it'll update it. Yeah, your multiplier still says times encumbrance load multiplier. Can we write it in here? Oh, we can. Yeah. Okay. So let's just look up the rules. Um, and come, uh, carry. Sorry, Nick. This is, um, so if you are bigger or smaller, so a larger bipedal creature can carry more weight depending. So it's supposed to be times two. So Nick, that's actually inaccurate. You're supposed to be able to carry 933 oh, pounds shit. as a light load. Because your size, because your strength just went up to a twenty fucking four. But if we bring your size back to medium, for some reason your AC should go up to a twenty six, and it's not, which is the weird part. But either way, your size is large, so the important details are in there. That's all that matters. you so. you can carry Varix on that bird. Oh yeah, dude, it's a twenty four strength large creature. Like that thing is, it, it's a fright. Like that, that's a it's frightening just, animal. It's pure muscle. Yeah. Like think about that. Like think about all the Australians that you guys see uh, uh, riding, you know, ostriches and breaking their poor legs and spines it, and whatnot. It, it, it's actually like more than twice as strong as that. Jake shakes his head, but he knows he saw one when he was a kid. He went to a, a, an ostrich rodeo and he saw that shit happen. Yeah, there are ostrich rodeos. <laughs> Wait. Not wrong. I know. Wait. Only aware. Yeah. Yep. That's mega fox. But they do it humanely. You have to wait under a certain amount before you can do it. Then you yeah. jump on the bird. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. Bird ears in general are fucked up, but like. God. Yep. No, Jake, have you ever tried to jump on an ostrich? You don't have to answer that question while we're streaming. <laughs> 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 I don't think the bird would be standing. <laughs> He's like, nah, mate, nah, I'm not that dumb. Ridden a few kangaroos, though. <laughs> Popped in that pouch, took a nap. <laughs> On an emu. <sighs> and, you know, emus are smaller than ostriches. That would be truly cruel. I said fought emu. Oh, fought an emu. Oh, you lose that fight. You lose that <laughs> war. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm getting at. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Um, all right, uh, anything else? Do you guys teach the uh, Australian emu more in in like your, your public schools, or is this something you have to go to like private school to learn about? Are you talking to me? No, I was talking to the the we, Americans. We get taught about our uh, native animals, sure. In uh, in primary school, yeah. The war like between public private whatever. Oh, that I, I I never actually heard of it until you you brought it up. Oh, really? Like a shame. 
It's probably been a shame that's been just, we don't talk about it. <laughs> a couple of dudes got like, I think a couple of guys died, like driving a Jeep into Outback, shooting emus with a machine gun, unironically. Listen, you need to wear that shame the way Germany wears its shame. You put up monuments, you teach it in schools, you pay reparations, okay? You, 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 you the, wear that shame. The emus, okay. the, the emus won because their population just came back. Oh. <sighs> It never diminished. It didn't yeah, even go down. Like, they killed like 80 of them, I like, which is like mega fucked up, by the way. They killed but. 80 of them and 90 eggs hatched. Like, like oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. Anyways. It was bad. Uh, anyways, let's, let, let's go back. Let's go back to the game. Do we, do we want to start the travel or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can, we can get some basic stuff out of the way. Um, uh, obviously we know that this session is kind of like shoring up those, those fun little details and getting that stuff out of the way. Uh, you talked about, you talked to your different leaders about what path they're going to take while they're leading, except for Ferex. He didn't, but that's okay. I'm going to have fun with it. So you guys, um, no, you're not. What? You are not. What? Nope. I'm absolutely going to have fun with it. Nope. Look, um, Kabe is, Ooh, Kabe is almost a city. Holy shit. He's almost at 36. Oh, oh, no, no, that's right. You have eight months since your castle's done, so it's very far away from being a city. Mm. Well, over the course I of the next eight plans. Scott, you're going to like what my plans are next time I can build. You're going to need a... Jake, are you ever going to grab a second district inside of uh, uh, Kabe? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Because you you know the new maps that you guys got have more district areas and whatnot, so you, you're kind of good there and... You know, what's yeah, that? What? I have my, you know, half price ruins. All right? I'm not letting them go to waste. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where do we have those tucked away? It's to your, yeah. And number three. Yeah. Dude, you should do that. Dude, we should do that next. Oh, I know what you'll, I'll do all I'm, you're I'm going to. I, I want to. No, no you're not building I'll claim stuff, those and I'll build stuff with the ruins. It's all good. No, all good. you will not. You'll come back no, and be like, you won't. First of all, what the fuck did you do building the biggest brothel that Kijikasi has ever seen? And second of all, that's the biggest beautiful. <laughs> That'd be so funny, though. <laughs> they just turned these old ancient ruins to a fucking brothel. No. It's not happening. He calls it. Them, right? He calls it. It's called. It's gonna be a market. It's called ancestry. <laughs> they just have a ledger of like everyone's like birth relations to just figure out the lines. <laughs> it's just a brothel called ancestry. That's all it is. Oh God. Okay. So are we? We're de we're departing from Vosk, right? Yeah. The plan is for you guys to meet up in Vosk, and who are you bringing with you again? Ilya. Because we're actually going to want to have that little chatter. Oh. Yeah. I guess the only note is I would have had clothes made for me under Pete's direction for the style that could jinx see in the north, the the oh, northern. Lucky style. for you, Pete has a plus nine in fashion design. <laughs> I love it. He does a lot He's of plus better. nines. There's an awful yeah, lot of plus yeah, nines, there, buddy. But uh, yeah, I, I would have had that done. I would have had clothes made, and I guess like probably talked about etiquette and whatnot. I'm not bringing it for Jake's sake. Um. So, uh, what was I saying? Um. What are you? Uh. So you guys are of course gonna get your clothes, your fancy clothes or whatever. You did you guys pay for those yet? I don't think you did. Um, hey, I think I did. I get that check. How much would they cost? I'm figuring out right now for you. I mean, I I priced it out as a noble's outfit and uh, ceremonial it's armor. It's like what seventy five. <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah. So outfits. Here we go. Uh, noble's outfits just seventy five gold pieces. As you just said, a royal outfit is two hundred gold. If you want to be like, <gasps> ooh, sunlight sensitivity is three hundred. That's pretty cool. Uh, a Shinobu Shizoku. I have no idea what the hell that is. Cost 50. Shinobi, I think. You Soldier's uniform gold. is one gold. <laughs> that's that's Shinobi. Scott, not Shinobu. Oh, sorry. I, I think I was my eyes were getting ahead of. Um, oh, so, so it's legit just like a, like a ninja outfit. Okay, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah, would I would I guess I would ask Pete. <laughs> whether it would be appropriate for me to wear something that would be royal clothing or should I just wear noble clothing, right? 
I would be encumbered wearing noble clothing. <laughs> I, I honestly feel like with you guys being the warlords, um, uh, royal sounds more appropriate. I'm going to read the difference between the two of them, and we'll decide that way. So for a noble's outfit, it specifically says, uh, these clothes are designed specifically uh, to be expensive and gaudy. Precious metals uh, and gems are worked into the clothing. Uh, a would-be noble also needs a signet ring and jewelry worth at least 100 gold pieces um, to um, uh, accessorize this outfit, which means you have to spend an additional 100 gold pieces on other stuff on there. As this outfit does not cost the 10 GP or less, player characters cannot choose this outfit for free when beginning uh, when first beginning play, whatever. Royal outfit. Uh, just it, This is just the clothing, uh, not the royal scepter, crown, ring, and other accoutrements. Uh, royal clothes are ostentatious with gems, gold, silk, and uh, fur in abundance. Um, and same thing I said beforehand. So kind of like a royal outfit. Uh, has nothing else to uh, add on to it, but it's like legit, like I am the leader. I have this gaudy outfit that I'm wearing. Sure, I'll, I'll pay for it. And uh, a noble, uh, uh, sorry, a, a, a royal outfit is 200 gold pieces and it weighs 15 pounds. Yeah, I, I'm not wearing it obviously while traveling. It's so so Nick, package. I could definitely, how much does, the, uh, uh, does your uh, ceremonial armor weigh? Uh, I gotta look. Because yeah. I could totally see the the royal outfit of your clan being like armor almost like you have to imagine like um in uh, uh feudal japan is like it? like having uh, almost like some of the some of the uh the the warlord like leaders walking out wearing armors as yeah. their like their garb that makes sense for specifically your clan whereas jake's i could see yours also counting as ceremonial armor if you want to wear armor but the way yours is done is layers upon layers of like hide and furs and stuff like that especially with well, it being winter my time. armor is uh is the my father uh grandfather's armor oh that's right you're not you're not you're not buying it's outfit. dalish that's right. that's right no that's right it so, was taken from a dalish commander in charge of uh you know, that region so how much is the way uh, well how much does it weigh there's silken ceremonial 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 armor is that what you're talking about yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, that one. And it that says one, you wear it over your armor too. It weighs 30. eight pounds. How much? And it's it's thirty gold weighs eight pounds. Okay. So what I'm saying is, you guys, because you're from warlike clans, not just like some regular pompous thing, because you're from the war clans of the south, you are literally a clan of of warriors, right? That's that's what your clan is known for. You're literally a clan of smiths. That's what your clan is known for. If the two of you want to wear ceremonial armor. So you have the stats of ceremonial armor, but you're buying the royal outfit. I'm perfectly fine with that. So you're paying the 200 gold of the royal outfit, but it's a, it's a modified version of ceremonial armor. I'm all in for that. Yeah, well, because the ceremonial armor armor silk anyway. It's supposed to be like light designy clothes. So what? But, I it, spent but, but the reason why it gives you a what is it plus one AC, right? Plus one. Yeah. But the reason like why it does that is because it, it's so fucking layered. It's like quilted to give you extra defenses. So what we pay the cost of the royal plus the ceremonial just the royal outfit but you get the okay. stats of the ceremonial armor sound good so same well, so just a plus one to ac yeah uh correct so, now, now mind you does it have an ac does it have an acr acr acp no. acp acp no. Nope. zero oh i meant skill skill failure skill nope Oh yeah, ACB armor check, armor check penalty no yeah, it doesn't zero. zero okay cool then you're good so just the 200 gold pieces that's exactly what we just described got you Okay, silken and it weighs eight pounds. Mm -hmm. Now that's the outfit that you're going to be wearing for when you're first up there. Are you going to be buying any additional outfits for you to wear for different types of events while you're up there? Um, you're going to wear like the same outfit consistently. The entire meta wise, time? what would Pete tell me? Uh, well, Pete, Pete would tell you how long do you intend to stay for, and you'd be like, <laughs> the, the entire yeah, like the entire week. You'd be like, then you should have an appropriate outfit for the entire week. And, and the way Pete would describe it is your big ceremonial thing, that royal one, would be 200 gold pieces for like the one that you ride in with and that you wear during like so whatever. But then for the other days that you're there, different noble outfits. Oh God, one for each. <laughs> That's what Pete would suggest because it makes um, you it makes you stand out as being like I don't just have fine clothes. I have fine clothes for days. And that's like just 75 per day besides the first. Correct. Yeah. So six times 75. Okay, I'll do it. So 150 times three, 450 gold pieces. Yeah, so 600, 650 six. gold pieces uh, to cover the entire week to be like, holy shit. Yeah. I don't know if you guys yeah. can afford that. Uh, I 
took out two BP in total over yeah. a couple of times, so I can afford it. They can afford the 650 gold pieces. Well, actually, Jake, I suppose you're circumventing this by being like, I wear my daddy's armor every day. Yep. I miss daddy. I, I have only mm -hmm. 2,701 gold to spend when I get there, but that's fine. I'll, t I'll take the L on that because I'm meant to make an impression here. I will, uh, I'll buy two, but uh, that, that's as far as I'm going. And these aren't ceremonial armors as well, right? They are not. These are meant to be uh, gaudy outfits. Which is why Nick would wear it like, for this ceremony specifically, I wear this. For this ceremony specifically, I wear this. But otherwise, I'm wearing my fucking armor, dude. Like, I feel naked if I'm not in my shell. I am a turtle. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my, uh, I'm going to get Jorman or something. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll send my uh, Foqua staff. I'll have rubies put in its eyes and that. That way, that's that's me blinging out. You have to spend uh, gold on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want yep. like large rubies or whatever it is, like we can actually cost that out really quickly for you. We did just important. discover some rubies, didn't we? Oh yeah, you did just discover some rubies, but you, you would probably keep that for your own clan, wouldn't you? You probably would uh, just give those ones away. Uh, no, he, he would have to buy them, but like at a discounted rate, I would say. He's a friend. Mm -hmm. Um, give me so, one like, second. One category down, if for like the price right if it's like large ruby is 2000 the price down below it or whatever so a large I mean, ruby just to be clear i'm looking up hold on i'm looking at pathfinder's rules large ruby is worth specifically a large ruby 1d4 times 500 gold pieces but you can just um, you, yeah, you that, that's that's for found ones you can choose to buy smaller ones right so and what about two medium? And it doesn't it map. doesn't define what large is, but it's probably like, you know, uh, a handful of carrots. You know what I mean? There are two yeah. handfuls of carrots. Does it have medium ruby? Let me just see. Uh, small ruby is one d four times a hundred, and large um, is one d four times five hundred. So five hundred to two thousand each. Um, small so is do, one to four hundred each. Um, how much are you willing to the, spend, Jake? Uh, no. They can. I don't care. Wow. I don't care that much. That oh, was wow. just going to be funny, but I'm not. I've I've got other things to spend money on while we're up there. Yeah. I mean, rubies have to can't just be given. I think I would have to make some like loyalty checks or whatever for that. Well, he yeah. might be able to get away with some other um stone that's not specifically a ruby. Let me. Yeah, see. we have we do sapphires, emeralds. It's funny because uh, diamonds and rubies are about the same price, which makes sense. Um, really, uh, where are you seeing this in trade goods? Uh, I'm actually on, on one of the different, um, websites oh. that, that cover the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's done by, um, the, uh, archives of Nethys. Yeah. But I, either way. So, um, it's all good. So, and star sapphires, brilliant green emeralds, all that fun stuff. Um, cool. You would not use any other stones, Jake. It would have to be Ruby. Or, no, I mean, I don't care. It was just, uh, I mean, if there's cheaper stones, it depends how much cheaper. You wouldn't want a black opal? It's funny because it's Australian. And if you don't know, black opals come from Australia. Most most of them in the world. Um, uh, I feel like obsidian is uh, appropriate for you as well, considering where you're from. You probably have obsidian. Uh, obsidian is not very expensive either. Uh, ivory feels very appropriate for how we're doing this. Onyx feels very appropriate for him, actually better than Obsidian. Onyx feels really appropriate. Um, yeah, how much is that? Onyx, it doesn't have like a size to it, but 1d4 times 25 silver pieces. So if you went, if you just factored that by 10, 1d4 times 5 gold pieces, those would be much larger Onyxes. Right? Yeah, I'll get two of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess roll, right? Yeah, uh, 2d4. Just roll 2d4, Jake, or ask somebody in chat to roll 2d4. Can you link me to it? It's actually probably something I should look at. Seven. Um, where are you? So is it like 70 gold? Uh, times, uh, what did I say? It was 25. Oh, so seven times 25? Yeah. So 175, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And it's already masterwork too, which is nice. Yeah. Um, uh, it's supposed to be silver, but he's upgrading the size by a factor of 10. So 
So you have uh, black onyx in the eyes instead, which is uh, so you have uh, onyx in the eyes instead, which is nicer. Um, onyx yeah. is a um, onyx is a is a uh, relatively soft stone when you compare it to things like ruby and diamond, but it's still it's still a fucking rock. You know what I mean? You're not using it for combat, so it'll be mm -hmm. fine. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, so you are good to go. All right, cool. You guys are meeting inside of uh, where is it called? Um, Vosk. Vosk. Nick, who are you bringing with you? Oof. That's a good question. I thought I was just basically coming with Hoko. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's what you decided, because Hoko is both a representation of you and Vosk, I think. Yes, and but should I bring Zara with me? She's technically my companion, but she's also one of my commanders, so I don't know if I want to take her. It's, it's up to you. Do you think you need uh, to have the extra commander there? Um, by the way, Onyx is actually a 6.5 to 7 on the most scale, so that's actually not that soft. Softer than Diamond by a, a, a fair bit, but I actually thought it was a little bit lower on the most scale. So. That is a pretty good on a most. That's about Quartz, isn't it? It's about Quartz. Yep, Quartz is a 7, Amethyst is a 7, so. Yeah, I, I, it'll just be me and Hoko. Right. My jolly so, skills are coming in. <laughs> It, um uh so you and hoko are going cool um uh so we put hoko with nick okay cool uh who are you bringing with you jake i'm bringing okram with me so okram is also abandoning his post during the time that you're gone this isn't gonna affect the uh months he's been there right if that's resetting to zero no 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 no, no, no. no, no, no. Yeah. he just he technically just falls one month behind the other ones but but that's that's not a yeah. huge thing there. It's um it's minus two stability loyalty and unrest one unrest. Mm -hmm. And your lore keeper will be able to uh um c cover that empty spot. Oh, that means no unrest and the negatives. Oh. Good. Yeah. So uh you'll be you'll be fine. It technically says magister or counselor, but Mara also just it makes logical sense even though the mechanics say one thing. It makes more sense that she can handle being the uh, high priest than it does for her to uh, handle the shaman. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I'm fine with Mara uh, covering that for you, so you're good. I'm assuming my curator can't cover my uh, my envoy, right? My grand diplomat. What? I don't think Ishai's. I don't think my my curator, my Ishai. I don't think they've ever said anything ever. Um, I don't know which one it is. Ishai. Ishai. Oh, I don't think so. I don't remember the personality of that one. Um, they're aristocrat. Um, they're a scholar. It looks like. Yeah, so it doesn't make sense for them to cover uh, GD. They're sophisticated. That doesn't make sense for them to cover GD. Yeah, I know. Like, Mara has history to it, which is why I'm willing to bend the rule for her, right? I know. I'm I'm taking my L. It's fine. But he'll be useful someday soon. Okay. What else? Anything else? No, I think we're good, right? Okay. Uh, at the oh. moment we leave Voss, we get attacked. Wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Who are you taking with you? Oh, Aaliyah. We've been... Wait, you're legit been bringing her? Yeah, we've been through this. So you can't do any diplomatic edicts while you're gone, which is funny. I you're going up there for diplomacy. So well, you're actually well, doing I, a diplomatic edict while you're gone. she want to go there as well? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, fuck. Of course well, she, did. She, she She asked. I was already going to take her. Um, I assume she can do diplomatic edicts because she's there theoretically doing diplomatic edicts oh no i'm aware i'm yeah yeah obviously i was just, that's why i was just laughing about it but um yeah i mean like that was kind of like the whole plan she has connections up there right she could see her father there's a bunch of reasons why she she should go yeah it gives you opportunity to uh, actually cut into the whole backstory idea for for the character so it, she's literally the one person that makes sense to go um all right awesome so the uh the so nick is technically bringing nobody because Hoko is uh, representing a different clan entirely. Nick, are you sure you don't want to bring anybody with you? <clears throat> because you can bring, what's her name? Which Zara. one? Z Zara, is that her name? The core, yeah. his, his cohort. Because um, you're not going to bring your general slash, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, yeah, I can bring Zara. I mean, it won't have a negative impact on my kingdom roles. And I do have... Barbados hanging out, so if I need to swap out a commander, he can step in. 
I'm not bringing Barbados. <laughs> yeah, don't bring. <laughs> don't don't. He's gonna accident. He's gonna kill someone because you said <laughs> like you know. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We're just <laughs> going up and there's some tensions about me maybe hiring Barbados to go slaughter some some noobs, and you know, I'm trying to deny that. But yeah, let's we'll go up there like best friends. Nobody else. <laughs> He'll kill two people for two gold coins. It's fine. Fantastic. Yeah, I oh, fuck it. I'll bring Zara. All right, cool. So you bring Zara with you. Uh, we shouldn't have, actually have a token, but that's fine. So uh, you bring Zara with you. And Zara actually, um, I don't know if we've really truly defined her. Right, she actually is statted. She actually has character yes. sheet, doesn't she? Oh. Yes. Enough, let's actually pull her out real quick. Uh, where is she? Kushibashi, armies. Where is her stats? Let's close Shado because I don't give a fuck about you. Let's close Densho. I don't give a fuck about you. Barbados is, uh, I don't even know where you belong. Where is she? She's um, under armies. The I tab see. is Zara right there. Yeah, no, that, that tab is for the army. Because before yeah, I did the other thing, I spent way too much time working on that too. But... Her character sheet's right there. Where? Oh my god, I don't think I could see it as that person. I don't think I gave me the rights to see it. I think that's why. Let me just check. Ah! I didn't give me the rights to see it. Who has the rights to see it? I gave it to you? Ugh. Get rid of that tool bag. Ah, uh, it was Joey. By the way. Um, uh, because know. Joey started them out. Yeah, jo Joey yeah. started them out. Yeah, okay, now Although I can find I, it. I, I think uh, she still needs a mount, technically, so I, I don't know. If, I don't know if you've done that yet, Joey. Or if you want to, I can do it if you don't. I mean, she doesn't need a full blown. She doesn't need a full blown statted mount. It's not entirely necessary. She has a competitory, theoretically. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, she kind of does because of her class. Because she's a yes. cavalier, isn't she? Yes. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. So she actually does need kind of kind of new one. Okay. Uh, either way, so her personality here, she's mounted combats or her feet. She's only level two. Uh, but I think you're about to give her the big old whoop uh, in a second, aren't you? Um. Yep. Because, wait, wait, is she currently your cohort? Yes. And what level is she? Uh, she's two, but because of my class, she's four levels behind me. Oh, so she's about to get a level three. Gotcha. I understand. Yes. I understand. Cool. All right. Anyways, so for her, uh, she's actually not the smartest or the most charismatic, Oof. but she's wise. So that she'll was... know to shut the fluff up while there. That was there. because of how it was role played, right? Because she didn't say shit and then she wrote terrible reports. But was good at relaying what what a, what the actual information was later. Yeah. And she fucked shit up. Yeah. That's great. Zara, That's Zara has won more battles than Naren has since the beginning of this campaign. That's funny. Oh my god, I love that she has a terrible charisma score. They make they would make her she'd make a terrible general. You know what I mean? Like that that just makes me so happy. Could command a bad general because like your general what's your general's uh uh christmas score nick also terrible what is it it's 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 garbage uh she uh is mostly a strength based general because um, because either stat works so that affects the number of armies you can have who is a negative one yeah. yes so that's one of the reasons why you have to be aggressive um and she doesn't have a leadership score does she no uh, cause she has no, no way of having any form of leadership score. So that, that stays as a zero. So, but your clan's recruitment is at what normal or aggressive? Normal. You need aggressive just that. Oh man, your, your aggressive is still just one army. Huh? Uh, do you need to be warlike? Yeah, you need, how many armies do you have? Two. You, have two. you probably need to be warlike for your, for your clan. I'm pretty sure you gave me a pass on that, but. It just makes sense for you to be warlike, so you can have enough armies because your your your, your general is uh is a little uh, sketch. It's because we weren't incorporating all the rules perfectly beforehand. We've so, gotten oh, most okay. of the rules down though now actually. What was that? Oh yeah, we've I know. gotten we've gotten the rules pretty good now. So Nick, you had passes before. You're warlike now. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, that's funny. Ah, uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And if you remember everyone correctly, that Scott was like, nobody needs to be aggressive. 
That's he it. did say that. Imagine being yep, Scott yep. right now. Yeah, no, please. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, thanks, thanks, Diesel, for the uh, for the raid. And then uh, that's actually we're gonna run into that same problem because even though Mike makes right, I don't think that applies for army for for how many armies you can have. That's a separate rule. It's a rule um, that stands outside of the other ones. So I think Urzog will have the same problem. It's based on charisma, but it says straight you can replace stuff with that. With might, strength but might make sure it doesn't specifically talk about that. Like I actually shoehorned it to do as much as it does do, but that's okay because Urzog's uh, charisma is a ten, so Jake should be fine. Because his loyalty is almost a forty, so Jake should be fine. Once his loyalty is a forty, he he's in the clear because you have a number of armies equal to uh, 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 your loyalty divided by twenty, rounded down. So he's almost to where he needs it to be. Uh, to, to be clear, if his taxes weren't crushing, if he was even just heavy taxes, he would actually be fine uh, for the sake of rules. But we'll worry about that later. He hasn't updated his sheet yet. All right. So uh, I think that covers everything. This brings us down to it's time for you guys to actually leave to head to the north. So um, uh, we had a lot of like kind of like uh, upper talk and side chatter and everything. Next session literally goes down to your characters starting to head north, like actually uh, heading out of the gates and, and beginning to travel. So um, any other fine details, final details you need to take care of in Vosk before you start heading in that direction. I okay. assume we don't have to worry about rations and water and whatnot. That's kind of hand waved. Not only do you have armies traveling with you, the armies are actually it's like a caravan, right? Yeah. So, so like your characters do not sleep out in the middle of the ground while traveling north. Your warlords. So your characters will actually be inside of wagons and you would sleep inside of wagons and more than just inside of wagons, your wagons would probably be pulled by beasts and you would have your own wagons. So while certainly there will be points in time where the three of you would choose to walk along or ride alongside each other uh, outside of said wagons or whatever it is. Oh, actually, no, you guys are probably a little bit more practical than that. Uh, let me take this back a step because your characters are riding your way up there. Uh, I imagine you have wagons of goods, um, uh, like all the supplies that you need, the feed for the animals, the uh, uh, the food, the water, and all that stuff for the sake of travel, as well as whatever amounts of gifts you're bringing with you. Jake clearly brought zero BP in gifts because, you know, he pout. Um, I have three. Yep. And Nick brought um, uh, two-thirds of a tree. Look, I have I have an idea for what I'm doing. I'm bringing two bronze weapons or half a tree from shot. the cache that I found. Uh -huh. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, whose value totals I think oh. copper. Okay, cool. I, I, I have a yeah, it is. It's, it's the history. All right, it's the symbolism. You sell it. You sell it. So you, you sell water to a man in the ocean. You know, like a man well, in the lake. I mean, sorry. <clears throat> so there was a man in the ocean. That sounds like a pretty good or, deal. Or selling sand to a man in the desert. You know, like. Those crystals I got, were they one-time use or do the spells just fade and then they can be refilled? What are you talking about? So I got some crystals for an event. Those that, crystals uh, are, are, are one-time use. One-time use. Yeah. Oh, so he has like a, a Unseen Servant for four months and then it done? Correct, because Unseen Servant lasts for what, hours? Yeah. yeah. But an appropriate spell that lasts <clears throat> for days... That could last a long time. That could be a, an actual gift. The stone yeah. itself is a pretty powerful gift. It is. Oh. So, I'm chilling with an unseen servant then. <laughs> so my point is that those 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 uh, uh, wagons that you guys have, bringing supplies for yourself, your BP, your your all the things that you have inside there, those wagons would also have like a bit of a covered area. Like literally within the wagon, which is probably like a canopied covered wagon, would actually have like a structured wooden spot, maybe with little bits of metal into it to reinforce it or what what have you, almost like being like, acting like a shield, and you'd be able to sleep inside of it. So God forbid people just started like raining arrows down on your camp when you were sleeping at night, they won't hit you. Granted, if somebody shot a ballista at it, you, you know, that's a different conversation or a catapult, that's a different conversation. But but um uh, for the sake of like simple arrows, bolts, whatever it is, th th you would be protected from um very simple attacks uh inside of this little uh housed area. What were we saying, Cell? No, you just reminded me I wanna look at how, what it costs to make a siege for, for an army. Um so uh, back to game, um, your characters, when you kind of meet up and to have a, the conversation with Hoko and have everything prepared to be able to head to the north, I think every you're bringing a half dozen soldiers, a dozen soldiers. How many were each of you bringing? Um, 
I think I, I think we agreed. Was it five from each clan? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Yeah, five people. Yeah, five yeah. soldiers from each clan. Did we did we look up the rules of what that uh, cost? Are we counting them as armies? Uh, I suppose technically they don't need to. They don't need to count as armies. No. That's yeah. That's well, technically we're all gonna level up and we're all gonna have followers. Yeah. Oh. Uh, followers still cost if you're using them as armies, but um, uh, consumption if you're using them as armies, just not to form or whatever. Uh, I, either way. So, um, uh, you guys are going to grab together your peoples and you're going to start. He- no, let me check something out real quick. I want to make sure I'm, I'm getting this right. If they're going to have army, Hoko say one little thing and then you guys will be able to get out of here. If they're army, they're super cheap. Of course, because it's fucking five people. So I'm just trying to see the breakdown. I don't remember the size breakdown. I'm almost there. It, it, it's, it's a patrol. It's 0.1 equipment cost plus eight right, camouflage yeah, yeah. and minus two of the CR of the creature. So, so yeah. So, uh, the reason why I'm saying it should still be armies is because with it being uh, um so you guys are each bringing a patrol with you which does have a small cost to it right so um uh for for the sake of consumption or what have you it does have a small cost to it it's not the end of the world your kingdom's going to pay for it while you're gone but the reason why it matters is because if certain things happen while you're on the road you guys are hero armies right and those are your patrol armies you know what i'm saying and for somebody like say nick Nick, your patrol army is led by Zara. Whereas their patrol armies are led by... I mean, I couldn't lead them? You, then you would be one army instead of being two. Oh, fair, yeah. And that's your choice. Do you want to be one army? Or do you want to be two armies? Nick, sorry, Jake could no. do the same thing. Or Nick could do the same thing. Uh, we can't... I mean, if we have combat, I'm assuming we're not... Like, we can't just fight them, right? Uh, it depends on what you're fighting. If we're fighting against 50 people, you're not going to want to oh, yeah. stat out like individual combat. That'd be boring as shit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess. I mean, if I knew that, I, I would have probably statted these guys out with some armor and weaponry. I mean, you can still. You didn't have money. I think. Yeah, I think you spent all of your money right before you did your kingdom roll. You took your last three BP as um, a gift. Yeah. Maybe. I don't remember. Yeah. But that's okay, because it's not like I'm going to screw you over here. It's five people. You don't, like, the cost is one-tenth. Yeah, it, everything only costs one VP. Yeah, it's it's super cheap. Like, literally, the fact that I'm charging you one consumption for the month that they're active, because that's the minimum I'm allowed to charge, is already me being a dick. So we'll say that that covers the cost of giving them ranged weapons and shields. You, you know what I mean? Like, oh. Yeah. So, um, so fine. I'm trying to think of the penalties, right? How, we, would be, we would be really bad as armies, right? I mean, I'll decide later. So, uh, that being said, Hoko reports to you that he's been keeping an eye on the hills. He's been walking the hills themselves and having others watch them. And that the hills, for at least the first part of your travel, which bringing that back over to the map uh, for everybody. Um, I don't know if you guys are able to see the map or not. Let me just check. Yeah, it's for you over there. Obviously, starting in Clan Vosk, and you're going over to Ten Chang, uh, which everybody can see now. Um, he's saying that he can he can certify that there is a degree of safety that exists uh, from here all the way to about uh, uh, all the way to here. There's definitive safety, which is uh, three hexes. Uh, the remaining six hexes are a bit of a question mark as to how safe they are. He says no question. The first three hexes definitively safe. After that, the next hex, um, and that's actually where you'll have more than just your, let's say 20 or whatever you guys end up equaling or, or 30, whatever you guys end up equaling everybody together. Uh, you'll actually have um, a group of people from Vosk itself traveling those first three hexes with you. You'll have like, you know, uh, 20 soldiers on either side flanking you or 10 soldiers I say, on either side flanking you, making sure that you're, you have an entourage protecting you up until that point. That then that 20 soldiers will be able to watch you from here as you guys travel down this hill, and then by the time you get up this hill over here, um, uh, you will not be able to, uh, th- they won't be able to really see you anymore. You'll be too fucking far away. So you have to imagine from here, you're 100% protected, and then to about here, uh, then your protection kind of fades away. And from there to here, that's where that remaining like four hexes is where dangers can ensue. How much of that land actually belongs to Teng Chang? And so how kindly they might be, so on and so forth, those are all different conversations. And we'll have to get there when we get there. So um, 
Uh, Hoko Looks informs sweet. you of that. We are all excited about it. Everybody's going to be, I don't know. I, I, I won't lie. I'm excited about next session because next session we get to like bring it down to individual level. No more kingdom stuff for a little bit. Yeah. It's like several sessions of zero kingdom stuff. And then when we come back, we'll have to do the kingdom rolls that happened while you were gone. You get to roll them. I'm not surprising you. I'm going to tell you what your advisors do, but you still roll the dice while I dictate to you what your advisors are doing. You know what I mean? If there's something that sounds completely out of whack, you'll be able to raise a challenge. And in raising that challenge, you'll um, uh, uh, get to have... Um, it's funny because technically Pete and... Um, what do you call it? Pete and uh, the, the ambassadors would be there to put their two cents in. Yep. Yep. So like I said, you'll be able to raise a challenge. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you two, the two, uh, Twinkle Dean, Twinkle Dumb for each kingdom, um, except for Nyx, who's currently missing one, unless, uh, uh Cell made a new one. Um, they are, uh, they will be able to chime in completely, but you will be able to raise, uh, like, like, Scott, that would not happen. And this is how I'm going to argue with you. And more or less, what you would do is you would say, um, I'm going to do like an advisor task to override you, that sort of a thing. I also want to give you one last heads up before we bounce out of here for all the patrons that are continuing to support your Patreon uh, created advisors. This month, they get a Patreon boon, which I'm going to make a little uh, video for them to kind of talk about them anyways. But they get a, a little boon called Friends in, uh, Friends in High Places. Um, and it gives each one of your Patreon supported Patreon advisors a plus three to an advisor check. It's actually, they get two tokens of a plus three. So you get to use those. Once you use it, you lose it. So, so you have two tokens. You can save them for as long as you want. Use them right away. But each advisor that's from uh, Patreon, so uh, a Ton Screet or a um, uh, name them, they all get they all get these two tokens for a plus three. So it's a it's a beneficial thing in, in in rough time, and you can stack that with other stuff like Luck Die and Winifred's Wisdom. So that's in theory the total of a plus like a, a twelve right there. So awesome. Um, good to get out of here. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Good. I won't lie. Fun things next week. Oh god, I'm scared. Yeah. All right. Everybody, um, I mm, time is it? It's one o'clock. I want to continue streaming something for a little bit, working on something, but I really should go to bed because I have work the next two days. <sighs> no, I'll just stream tomorrow night instead. All right. Good night, everybody. I'll find somebody to read. I'll find there somebody to read. <laughs>